Let's talk about some of the upgrades we're doing to the car to reach 500 wheel horsepower. Let's do it. Welcome back. If you're new to the channel, I'm Matt. We're chasing after tens with the Chevy Cruze 1.8 build that we're turbocharging. We're boosting. We've already boosted it, had some issues down the line, but we're gonna address how we're gonna fix some of those issues and what I'm doing in order so that way we can achieve those tens. We'll have the, the world's fastest Chevy Cruze. I know it doesn't sound very impressive, but it will be. First off, I wanna thank you guys for all your support your prayers, your kind wishes, and, and all the help, the donations you guys have made to the GoFundMe account. If it weren't for you guys, yeah, we would have been in dire straits. We're still not out the woods. Shannon is feeling a little better. And even after I had brought y'all that news, my father came down with stage four colon cancer. So that's also been something on our plate as a family. And again, I just wanna thank you guys for the support. If it weren't for y'all watching the videos, being interested in what's going on, none of this would have been possible. So I appreciate that. So in my last video, I started working on making a custom intake manifold in which that stuff is still sitting over here. I'm really waiting on the engine to get back from the machine shops. So that way I'll know how much runner length I can get away with. And I can't really figure that out without the engine in the car. I've gotten some measurements from a, a good buddy over at the Cruise Talk forums. I may take those measurements and go ahead and cut things down, make the intake manifold. But part of me does still wanna wait on getting the engine in the car. It's, it's been a year long process of just waiting. Speaking of, can you believe that? It's been one year, it's been over a year since we started making a manifold, adding a, just a cheap eBay turbocharger, which we're still doing. However, I did reveal the fact that it is a max speeding rods turbo. And so I do have a link down in the description so that way you can get a discount and get your project going. It's been a year, it took took nine months for the pistons to get finished and we're still waiting for the machine shop to finish things up. I think it's just kind of been with COVID and a lot of people wanting to do their projects around this time, maybe out of boredom, a lot of free time on their hands, unemployment checks, I don't know. But they are overwhelmed and it's not something I'm wanting to rush because I do know they do good work. I've been checking in with them once a week. The last progress or update that I got was the engine is on the end mill. He's waiting on a tap for his end mill in order to enlarge the, the head stud threads. So we can put ARP head studs on the engine to really sandwich that head down. Should I fix you some sandwiches? I don't want any f sandwiches. What is it with you to fix some f sandwiches? Okay. Make sure we don't lose any of that booster power. And then I also dropped off some main studs to have the thing line honed. And I'll, I'll leave down in the description what those actually are. And you know, it's, it's taken some machine work in order to make that work because it's not, they don't really have anything for this engine. So it's kind of been cobbled pieces from here and there to really make this thing work. As goes hot rodding, you know what I mean? Now that we got some of those things out the way, I know you guys are, are kind of curious as to the, what the plan is. I'm sure you're curious just for a, a life update and also what the heck is going on with the engine because without the engine, there's really not a whole lot of content I've been able to make, but I do have some plans while I'm waiting on it. Hopefully it won't be too much longer. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah. So let's just clear some of this stuff out of, actually, let's clear the all too familiar table out of the way. All right, so this first little bit is addressing the fuel system. Once again, we got a bigger fuel pump, but got a couple other go fast goodies that's just kind of been sitting up and I haven't had a chance to show y'all so let's check it out. Wow! All right now I did just have to bust open this box to make sure everything was there that I did order but I have yet to actually open them up so let's take a look shall we and I'll show you 
what we got to improve the fuel system. Yeah, let's see here. All right, we got ourselves. Uh oh. All right, I had to get a razor real quick. Let's take a look at this. I forgot what we're even looking at here again. <laughs> Shit just fell out. <laughs> what? <clears throat> Perfect. All right, so this is a direct mount fuel pressure regulator by Radium. Now let's go ahead and take a peek at it. And I got the, the black version. So essentially what this does is it increases fuel pressure as boost pressure goes up. Your fuel essentially, this will sit at the end of the fuel rail, if I can get that in camera. Sits at the end of the fuel rail and it has a vacuum and boost reference here. And you can adjust your fuel pressure to where you need it to be with this car, it's 58 PSI. Look at that, that's a nice little piece. Man, this thing's a lot tinier than I thought it would be too. But it's got a, a little swivel here. I don't think I'm gonna open this up. We'll just leave it in the package for now so it doesn't get all dusty. So it's got all the little connections that we need and this will essentially, based off of this reference here, it will increase the boost or fuel pressure to, for every one PSI of boost, it will increase the fuel pressure because uh, you need the fuel pressure to rise along with the boost. So that way the boost isn't fighting against your injectors. So that's one piece that I got. All right, so the next item up for bid here. The set, the pressure. What would you know about pressure? Well, I have kissed a man. I have a little gauge to the reference. Let's just go ahead and take a look at this. Disappointed guys, I didn't get a second set of stickers. So there we go, a nice little liquid filled gauge there. So we'll play around with that later once we get to that point. And then last but not least, I already know what this little bit is since we have already opened the other two. Come on, damn it. Golly. Oh, they give you a, a little piece of hose. All right, so we've got our, our fittings in here. But what this is, is a, a fuel damper. And that will essentially make sure that the pulsation of the fuel pump, it just kind of smooths things out. You know, it's kind of like a, a shock absorber, if you will, for your, your fuel system. And of course, this thing's in black as well. It's a pretty little trick piece. I'll leave a link down in the description. I really don't have any affiliates with them, but hey, if you want to follow along and do some of the same stuff, then there you go. Wow! I had to open this one as well again because I needed to make sure everything was there and the stuff has been setting up for a few months with everything going on in life, as is life. So let's give this one a, a little bit of a special opening. Uh, well, I'm gonna have to voice over this part because the audio, something happened with the microphone. Here's a voiceover of what's going on. So I did, so have, I did to have to go through, through and take just, inventory on this one, on this uh, particular box, because check it out. You can see on the box there, they ain't playing around. They want you to check that stuff immediately. We got ourselves a lollipop. Thanks guys, I appreciate that. What I'm doing is basically converting this into a return style system. Currently it is a returnless system. What? A sticker? <clears throat> There's your new home. Anyhow, I got this from Motion Raceworks and one of the reasons is I wanted to get some high quality stuff. I got some for some Fregola fittings. From my understanding is there are some pretty high quality fittings. I kind of had to map the whole system out so that's the inventory of fittings. I got some 8am PTFE or whatever it's called to go from the hard line to the fuel rail which I'll show you here in a moment and then I've got some 6am line that will go from the return of the fuel pressure regulator back to the tank. And one of the th reasons I went with Motion Raceworks is I kind of learned a little something here. It's the fact that it's 
that's conductive line. If you don't have conductive line for fuel, uh, this is one area where I wasn't going to take a chance. And uh, essentially you got, it, the fuel going through the line can build up static and arc through the casing and cause leaks, a fire, all this junk. So I didn't want to risk it there. This is a, a part where I spent some money and made sure that I got the right stuff. And this is me stating that I'm not really happy about having to drop the fuel tank again, but we got to do what we got to do, right? So here is the 8N fuel rail that I got from Ross Machine Racing. Pretty nice little just kind of blank piece. It's extruded and I'll have to end up getting one of their injector drills, which kind of drills the seat for the, the 11 millimeter and then also it puts a little bit of a lip on it so you're not tearing up the o-ring on your injectors and so what i'm basically stating here is that i'm going to mount the regulator on one side of the fuel rail and then the damper on the other side i ended up getting some fuel bungs as well or injector bungs and we may put those to use if we need to add some extra injectors now these are saucy. Check this out. So I did have to open these up, check it again, make sure I got the right stuff. And these are injector dynamic injectors. They are the 1050X. They come with some conversion pigtails. And these are some nice units. The reason I went with these and I'm not going with those semen decas anymore is because they actually, injector dynamics has all the information you need to plug into HP tuners, is, which is what I'm using. And I didn't want to really have to kind of tune around not having all the injector data that I needed. So here we are. These things are pretty damn trick. I'll, I'll leave a link down in the description as to what I got. Again, no affiliation, no affiliate links to this one, but I will link it down in the description. I'm pretty excited to toss these into the car, but we'll kind of cover all that in a future video. But this will make it easier for a, a noob like myself. <clears throat> Just like a Band-Aid. Yeah, oh well, I got two of them. So something else I decided to get was this cam cover, valve cover. Now this is an all aluminum piece. Check this out, look at that, look at that. It's, it's cast aluminum, as you guys have noticed in the past that I did end up melting the other valve cover. This was pretty inexpensive, it was like 38 bucks or so. I'll leave a link down on eBay where I got it. But I don't know, I mean, with it not being OEM, I might have to use some silicone in the corners and whatnot to make this thing work. But one of the cool things about this is I can drill into it, weld on a bung, or, you know, I'm not dealing with plastic anymore. So there's a lot more that I can do with this valve cover to help get some of the crankcase pressure just out of the engine. And then there's your, your two holes that kind of divert the crankcase pressure up to the top of the engine. We got ourselves a little bit of a oil separator right there at the top, that black plastic piece you do see there. And then it routes it over to the PCV valve, which it is a diaphragm, but then it comes out of this, I believe it's about three quarters of an inch where it just kind of exits. And normally it would go from the PCV valve to the back of the throttle body. Well, we're just cutting all that out. Pow! So one of the things I did end up getting, which was a little bit of a splurge as well, but I felt like after, you know, the power that we're going for with this build, we needed to get a better oil catch can. Got ourselves another sucker. Thanks guys. <laughs> But this is a, a, a pretty beefy unit. The, the opening on it is a good size. Every eBay oil catch can that I bought, I'm just like, man, none of these are big enough. And I'm just kind of demonstrating just how big the opening is. I did end up getting, a, I think it's a 14 ORB fitting. And then there's the filter. It's just going to vent the atmosphere. So it's going to come out the back of the... Where, where the PCV is at and just go straight to that can. I, I'm not willing to take the risk again of having a closed system and reverting that back to the front of the turbo, potentially lining the, the engine again, the complete cold side with oil. So I think this will be an awesome solution. 
I appreciate y'all tuning in. So what's holding me up from making any more content is really waiting on the engine. I know there had been some health stuff with family and all that, but I'm ready to get back into it. I've got another project in mind that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a air box, a, a custom, like a true cold air air box that I'm ditching the 2.5 intake going to the turbo thing. I'm just gonna get rid of that idea, stepping it up to three and a half inches. We'll cover that some more, but it's, basically going to kind of snorkel down into the wheel well but it will also allow me to use one of those flat style of air filters so be sure to stick around give this video a thumbs up let me know if you have any comments down below lots more to come just be patient i'm trying to be patient as well and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that way you get notifications so that way when i do upload a video you'll be notified until next time peace out with your peace out